guys. Welcome back to the Left of Straight Show interviews, the premier podcast that shares the stories of our amazing LGBTQ community and, of course, fantastic straight allies, all from entertainment, foodies, books, music, and advocacy. I'm your host, as always, Scott Fullerton, and let's start talking. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to a very special episode from my hotel room here in beautiful downtown Columbus. I have the man, the myth, the legend, a good friend of our show, Mr. Stan Zimmerman, is in town in Columbus, Ohio, for him and his partner, Jim Berg's play, Silver Boxes. Stan, welcome, my friend. How are you? Thank you for having me back. I just saw you in Palm Springs. We had such a good time together. Oh, my gosh. And you were a busy boy down there. You were doing Brady Bunch things and all sorts of fun. All sorts of things, just like I'm doing in the Midwest and coming to Columbus, Dublin, Ohio, actually. It's are you stuck. getting frequent flyer miles? Or are you in your car? I mean, Chicago to West Virginia to Ohio I, I, to... I drove a little bit, but I also have been flying a bunch. And it's been really great just to go to the country in West Virginia. I've never been there before. How was it? Charleston. What part? South Charleston. Oh, it's nice there. Really cute. And they were so grateful that I came down there. I could talk to them. We had a, a big group at the library, and that was it was really cool. I love that. My brother lives in South Carolina, just over the border from North Carolina. So we have to drive by there every time. We usually try to stop there for lunch. or We usually do. It's a beautiful little town. So, yeah, very nice. And Columbus I'm loving, too, as well. And this little town of Dublin, there's this whole little old section that is a very Stars Hollow Gilmore Girls vibe. It's very I honestly don't stay in the side. I stay either downtown or I stay a little more on the south side. And it's been really cute here. I found this little French bakery this morning that was amazing. There's a, a huge stream or lake, which they call the spring, yeah. underneath the bridge. I saw I that. I sat there for four hours and just contemplated or not contemplated. It was just gorgeous and beautiful day today. And It's been yeah. gorgeous. I actually had to wear a coat for the first time this morning, though, since Palm Springs. I mean, I was so freaking hot in Palm Springs. It's 121 degrees. And I just, in, the, in L.A. right now, it's also 121. I know. Can you believe that? Missed, You're missed. missing that. But, yeah, it was it was cool. It was like 60 degrees this morning. You were around 10 o'clock. But I loved it because it's blue skies and everything else. Guys, and fall is coming. And I wish we had time. I'd take you all over Columbus. There's so, so many great places here. But we're going to have dinner tonight and kind of talk about the play. You are in town for Silver Foxes. Yeah. We've been talking about this forever on podcasts and uh this is the midwest uh, premiere we did it last year in dallas directed by the brilliant uh, michael yuri who's a good friend mm-hmm. and he's now on broadway in a ton of mattress and jim left 5 a.m this morning so he goes to the matinee mattress and he's reporting in and saying he was mark was fantastic for i and love I that he had october 6th I still haven't had Michael on my show yet. I'm I'm so disappointed. Yeah. But yeah, he's been such a great friend of yours. And that run you had down in Texas was just amazing, wasn't it? It was sold out pretty much before we even opened. Wow. And it was great. And um, yeah, well, I wish we could have extended. There's there's still more Silver Foxes to be had there. But now we're bringing it to the Midwest and hopefully some other towns soon. Yeah. There we go. A little scoop going on. There's some big scoop coming up about it, so. I have to tell you that I'm I'm excited for it. This Evolution Theater Company that's staging it right now is um, probably one of the best LGBTQ theater companies in Ohio. There's a couple of them around. I've been to a few of them. But Mark Schwamberg does a fantastic job of getting together. I mean, it's it's their own production. It's like every, local productions, I'm sure you know, have their own local flair, right? A lot of their same characters they kind of bring around. A lot, of the same, a lot of the actors are the same, but the companies, right, we have one called Rust Belt Theater down by me in Youngstown that does the same thing. So it's, it's a very regional thing. So it's got to be a little daunting to kind of hand that baby over to a regional theater. How is that? Uh, it's scary and exciting at the same time that. Uh, because, you know, you want to jump in and go, wait a minute, do it this way. Or what about that song there? Or. Why are they wearing that costume? <laughs> because, you know, you've seen my plays. I kind of do everything. Exactly. So it is very good. Um, it's a release for me. I'm sure any therapist would say this is, this is right. a good experiment. And I'm handling quite well, don't you think? I think you're doing okay. great. And I'm sure Mark's been as nervous as you are to have the actual director and writer there the in the audience. Says, That's uh, a little crazy. Because I remember they had Del Shores out for a Sorted Lives play a while back. And I know how nervous they were then. So this has got to be. Yeah, and it took me by surprise. I knew it was going to be funny, and I I mean, I didn't know people were going to laugh regionally here, but they did. But I kind of forgot how touching it was. And at the end, I'm like 
getting teary eyed. I'm like, it's so sweet. They built these really beautiful relationships and everyone seems to be responding to, um, there's just not a lot of LGBTQ older characters that they see on a right. stage live for exactly. to go to. And they were very grateful about that. And I, I'm very excited to bring it here. Well, the concept is amazing. And it kind of, we talk about this. We've talked about your book forever. The book is out. You've been doing book tours still and everything. Talk about the reception of the book. Uh, well, we just did a book signing in Chicago. And I went on the Fox Morning News show and talked about it. And they seemed very excited. And then I went down to do a Q&A at a the library in, in South Charleston. And they were shocked at like, the turnout. But I think people... You know, bookstores now are one of the few brick and mortar stores that are actually getting bigger, not smaller, right? And not closing. So there's something about people wanting to go back to the old fashion of like holding a book in their hand. And so now I just got to figure out how I can go to different communities because it's so rewarding. Right. Now, I obviously love, you know, when I did New York and L.A. book signings with our friend Mindy Sterling and Marisha sure. Renoker, we did little Q&As after. But there's something about going into a community and hearing stories of how so many people were touched by Golden Girls especially and watched it with their grandmothers. And it was a way for them I, as little kids to bond and especially the LGBTQ uh, young people that they could talk and laugh with their grandparents or their parents. And it wasn't about the sexuality or right. all the questions of the church or wherever they're getting their, their dog from. Well, exactly. And like you said, I just spent six weeks in Palm Springs. You've gone down there quite a bit to direct and uh, it's a there and everything. There. But it's but there is that sense of community. I, mean, I, I did a great fundraiser. We raised $3,000 for the uh, center down there. But they do have a great community for seniors and things. Yeah. And you need that kind of. But that's not the way it is all over America. No. That's the basis of the play. We had seen this documentary called Gen Silent. And it was about people in as they get older, having to go back in the closet when they go into assisted living. So imagine of that age demographic, you, you know, right. so hard to get out and you finally get out and then, oh no, you got to go back in in your later years. And that just touched us. And I didn't even know it was a thing. Right. And that became kind of a plot uh, for the play. Absolutely love it. And then I remember way back in the very first quote table read at your house, which that probably reminded one who was, like some of the first uh, people you've never heard of George Takei, the beautiful late Leslie Jordan, Bruce Valanche, Todd Sherry, Sherry O'Terry, Daniel Gaither, um, Melissa Peterman. I can't forget her. Um, it was just, I mean, everyone in the room was like, how did this happen? And I said, I asked. I didn't know Leslie or George Takei at that point. Right. But since, you know, we've become friends with George. And um, I just said, here's my credits. Here's the show. Here's what we want to do. We don't have a script yet. And they just said, tell us the day and time when we'd be there. And it really was the most memorable moment. I mean, even like Melissa Peterman, you're like, how did this happen? And well, you've worked with Melissa before. I mean, I love Melissa. She's got her show back on with another one with Reba coming up, this thing. And I think I, I follow her social media, of course. And she's at the, like a Minnesota or something, county fair or something this weekend. She has just such a real sound and music person, at the right? Hollywood Bowl. And Isn't she so real, though? I mean, so real and probably one of the funniest people i've ever met and i met her she guested on the rita rock right and the uh, same producers of the reaper show and they said oh write something for her and like huh. i've always thought she's funny but i then i just fell in love with her and she would be standing on the side of the set if she wasn't in the scene and she'd be pitching jokes they were funnier than any other thing we would come up with i, I, love I that. kept saying to her if i ever get another show on the air i want to put you in the writer's room well, yes i love you on stage but you are so funny just her mind goes a million miles a minute amazing well you like you said you've had this mini tour now and everything how are you going everything just comes a life of its own i mean we have right before you go is still playing everywhere I'm which is amazing it, um on the 15th in palm springs it's having its desert premiere and then i'm being flown uh that wednesday and i'm doing two shows in tampa or they call it new tampa uh, in Florida on the 20th and 21st. So September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Right. So I think that's why there's a couple of productions. So uh, I'm so glad I can give up my time and of service uh, to be there for the next two weekends. I love that. And yes, Virginia, of course, keeps coming back. I I'm love them. doing that in Virginia in November. And I just on Zoom had an audition for the Virginia 
uh, with the actors down there reading for me on Zoom, and she was really good. So, Amazing. Yeah. And books, and now Silver Fox is going everywhere. How do you and Jim, do you and Jim still pitch ideas back and forth? How are, how does the next project come about? With you? Uh, if we get excited about something, and um, I will, you can be the first to know, but there is something exciting coming up that we're going to be commissioned to write. And so nice. we're just closing the deal on that. And um, and that will be really, and then we'll have to like, sit down and actually do it. You know, this, Last my time suit. commission work was ladies of the 80s, I yeah. think. So I'm excited to see what this could I be. I put my suitcase away for a little bit and uh, yeah. turn on my computer and get to work. Fantastic. Stan Zimmerman, always a pleasure to talk to you. I'm getting ready to go out to eat. And we're going to dish all about what's been going well. on in person. Thanks so much, my friend. I Thank appreciate you for it. Having me. Guys, be sure to check out Sam's book is uh, The Girls from Golden to Gilmore. Available now. Try to find it at your small bookstores. Have them order for it. Of course, it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, all those fun places as well. So go ahead and get that. Look for uh, some big announcements here coming from Stan about Silver Foxes and what him and Jimbo are working on next. We'll talk to you soon right here on Left to Straight Podcast. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Left of Straight Show. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast distributor and please give us a five-star rating so more listeners can find us. You can follow us on social media and be sure to check out our website for contests and other news and information. See you next week.